again, thank you guys for being here tonight. I just want to say this. I love you high. I love you high. You know, when I first came here and, and, I, and I did a visit and I did the walk through, I think Miles was escorting me around. Um, and I went into the various classrooms and, and I saw the learning that was happening. And I saw just the, the smiling faces. I saw teachers teaching. I saw just a community of learning happening. I wanted to be a part of this. I, I fell in love from, you know, you know, you love at first sight. I, I kind of fell in love at, at first sight when I ran into this place and saw the different places, the people. You just felt the community. And since I've been a part of this community, it has been awesome. People ask me all the time, how's it going? How's it like to be at the, the lab school? What's going on? What, what's happening? And, and I'm every single time I tell them, I love it. It's been amazing. Everyone is so warm. Everyone is so welcoming. Everybody wants to help. It's a community school. I mean, people really want what's best for this school. And I love it. I love it. And I love being a part of this. So part of my first 100 days, guys, I did a lot. I told you I was going to listen and I was going to learn. Okay, so I'm going to take you just through some of that to see what I've listened to, what I've learned over those first 100 days. So I appreciate, again, you guys being here tonight. So the purpose of this is to kind of go through uh, the 100-day plan of what we found, what, what I was able to find, discuss the current standing of the school, and then to share our vision moving forward for what we want to do here at the lab school. So during, you know, I did a lot of listening, right? And so just wanted to kind of tell you what I listened to and, and how I just gathered this information. You know, there was a John Hopkins uh, School Culture and Climate Survey that had tremendous participation. So this was a valuable tool that, we, that I used to kind of read through our ministry team used, even our foundation used, to kind of gather ideas about what people felt about the school. So we were at over close to 500 uh, parent respondents close to 700 student responses, over 90 faculty um, you know, participated in this survey. Part of my 100-day plan is I know a lot of you sent emails and responded to the things that I was putting out. So there's a lot of different emails that I received and was able to read through to get everyone's thoughts, feelings about the school, about things we needed to work on, about some challenges that we had, some struggles that we may have had, and some things that we were doing great, some points of pride that we had. So I was very excited about receiving all of this information. Data collection, you know, looking at all of the different the student data, the student results data, uh, you know, in, in from everything from, you know, uh, performing on the, 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 the LEAP exams, from ACT exams, AP, IB program, all these different things. I was just combing through and reading and just trying to figure out exactly where we were in the educational landscape here at U High. Uh, in, in informal information gathering, and with, I have a, a kind of put it all into to five buckets on the, the information that I was using to, again to help you know just ingrain in myself to embed myself into this uh, U High community. So kind of put it into five buckets. Obviously, the parents and alumni have had many different conversations, had many many different meetings with many different folks, uh, exchange phone calls, and all those different things. You know, dealing with, you know, Louisiana, because I think we, we are a broader community because we are U-High at the flagship university. That, that comes with a lot of responsibility. We not only are tasked with teaching your children, we're also tasked with being a model school, a demonstration school for, you know, the state of Louisiana and even beyond. I got a quick trivia question before you think of a demonstration school. What was our first model in people Y'all cannot respond. All right. What was our first mascot at University High? It wasn't Cubs. The first mascot were the demons. <laughs> Can you imagine that? The University High demons. The demons. Any, any reason why? Why would they name us the demons? Y'all have any, any clue? Any idea? Why? Because we were a demonstration school. Get it? Ah, demons demonstration. <laughs> it was a terrible name, but anyway, that's why they changed it. All right, so, but we were the demons because this school was founded to be a demonstration school, okay? And, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means and what it means to be a demonstration school at the flat.
Flash Hill University of Louisiana. So just spend a lot of time with the community. Guys, we have a lot of great things going on with the, the Baton Rouge community. We're really working with them uh, with a lot of partners in, in, the, uh, in the area. Also working with the, you know, the public school system here to help partner on some different things. So there's a lot of uh, great things that we're doing because we're, we want to share our resources. I think our job here at Flagship is to make the lives of everybody and have all the different parishes here in the state better. That's what a flagship does, and that's what we're committed to do. So, again, just speaking, LSU is such a huge place, just meeting with all the different organizations, all the different leaders of the different colleges and different departments. It's been really great uh, because they are also being invigorated uh, by this, uh, by just the ideas of new partnerships and the way we can do things. Obviously, when I uh, meeting with our faculty, one, one of the best things that uh, that was a part of my introduction to the lab school is that we did coffee talks when I first came in. I brought all of the teachers in by grade levels and we had just different meetings over, over some cups of coffee and just got their ideas about where they are and what we needed to do you know, right before they went off into the summer. So the, that was an amazing time for me to get a good grasp of what our teachers felt like in, in, uh, in, over here at UI. Right? So I, this is what I've learned. It, there were three major things that came out as I did all those different pieces, right? Looking at the uh, John Hopkins survey, looking uh, having all the different meetings that we had, all the different uh, just conversations that I've had, uh, observations, all those different things. There were three things that, that rose to the top about what areas of concerns or that people had questions about and wanted us to, to kind of address. So academics and curriculum, our school culture, you know, diversity and inclusion. So over the next couple of slides, I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of those, but what's going to come out that you, uh, as I have these conversations, I want you to think about these things is we're going to go over what our strengths are, what our challenges are, and then what we should start doing more of, and then what we should start doing less of, okay? So, strengths, community support. I've talked about that a little bit already. This community supports this school unlike any other that I've been around, and I've been around a lot. I've worked at the State Department, so I, had, I was able to touch a lot of different districts, a lot of different school systems, a lot of different schools. We, the community support that we have here is amazing and phenomenal and second to none. We are, that is definitely a point of pride. That is something that we are very proud of. We are very proud of what our community does to support this school. You know, our K-2 program, I think before I even had the job here, I had a colleague of mine who had his children in the school that was in like the third grade. He said, whatever you do, do not fool with K through five. Because <laughs> they do an amazing job. I didn't understand what he meant at the time. But now that I've been here and spent time here, we have a model in our K-2 program that should be replicated across the state. You will hear every single superintendent, school leader, they will tell you that if kids are, 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 are don't have good numeracy skills or literacy skills by the end of the third grade, they are lost. Forever. Okay? Forever. And what we do by having those two highly qualified teachers in that classroom and the instruction that they provide is phenomenal. You know, Ms. Leon and her team, they do an amazing job of getting our kids prepared. And by the time they hit that third grade, you know, people will tell us, well, oh, you kind of you scream your kid, that's fine, they're good, you know, blah, blah. You know what, I don't want to hear all that, because in their kindergarten, I don't care how well they come in prepared, you got to teach them, all right? They don't know much at kindergarten, right? You know, and they have to be taught. And we do an amazing job of teaching our kids, and that's a model that should be replicated across the state. Student earn accolades. Guys, our students produce great results. We are, uh, at last week, I was looking at the ACT report that came out a couple of weeks ago. Our student ACT average for the kids that just graduated last year was 25.4. That's the average. The average 25.4. That's phenomenal. That we're getting kids. You know, people feel like we're we're not a magnet school. But let me be clear. Sometimes people get confused by that. 
we are not a magnet school like here to get into the school and not be like a super performing child. Okay? We do have super performing children and we have children that, that are on the borderline, right? But we get them the way they need to go. But our average ACT scores are 25.4. We had 38 juniors and seniors who scored above a 30. Above a 30. So anytime you have about 15% of your seniors class going above a 30 on the ACT, that tells you you're doing amazing work. You're doing amazing work at this school. We have uh, four National Merit uh, semifinals of this past year. Okay, four National Merit semifinals. Guys, that is difficult to achieve. I can't even count the number of academic all-state student athletes that we have. We have close to 100 just with our fall sports. Okay, so that tells you that we are educating our kids, our kids well. They are performing well, and we are very, very proud of those accomplishments. Highly qualified faculty. Every teacher in this school is certified. I must just stop right there. I dare you to go to any school in this state to find out who is just certified. But we're going to raise it up a notch. Every instructor at this school has a master's degree. I promise you, no school in the southern region has a faculty where every instructor has a master's degree. I dare you to find another school that has those type of credentials. We have about 18 teachers and uh, administrators and, and counselors who are nationally board certified. I mean, they can go anywhere in the country and, and just walk in and teach. You don't have to worry about any type of certification because they are nationally board certified. That is phenomenal credentials. <clears throat> phenomenal credentials. And I dare anybody, definitely that Rouge, anybody, any school, I don't care where you, which one you bring up to me, they do not have the credentials that our teachers have at this school. And, and you know why? Because they have pride. When they get here, they know that if you if you come in, first of all, you probably won't be hired if you don't have a master's degree. Okay? But if you do get here, it's ingrained in your mind. You got two years to go ahead and get your master's degree. Okay? And that is what we preach here, that's what we teach here, because we want the very best for your kids. You didn't send your kids here to, to be uh, mediocre. You sent your kids here because you believe your kids are the best and you need to be taught by the best. And so that's what we're going to provide to you. Academically challenging curriculum of the whole child. You know, you hear a lot about STEM. You hear a lot about STEM. But here, we, we add that A in there. We, we say STEAM, right? Because we add that A in there for the arts. So besides the science, the technology, the engineering, arts and math. Because we want to educate the entire child. Yeah, it's, it's great, you know, that's going to be those four core subjects. But we also want to make sure that our kids are being given the opportunity to show themselves, to, to explore different things, to, to look at the arts, to participate in vocal music, participate in, in, in instrumentation, to participate in a theater, to participate in a bunch of different things. I mean, our band right now, I'm sure we have some band parents in the audience, they're getting ready to go to, to Hawaii uh, to perform for the 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. Okay? Those are the things that we promote here at the school. Okay? We promote, we want our kids to be well-rounded. Well-rounded. And that's what we're going to continue to support. The Foundation Board to enhance educational experiences. You know, we have a Foundation Board that is phenomenal. Okay? I've been around a lot of boards. And normally the boards, there's a, you know, a district board for the entire parish okay, that, that raises money. Uh, I've been uh, very involved with a couple of those. And they don't hold a candle to our foundation board. I'm not just saying that because they're here. Okay? But they don't hold a candle to what we're able to produce here. You know, this year for our annual appeal, this year for our annual appeal, we broke every record that we had by raising over $500,000 in our annual appeal. $500,000 for one school of 1,454 kids. That is phenomenal. And all that, and that all, we have a, a great team, a small team, 
It's three people uh, that work on that team. But obviously, the entire uh, foundation, as I look at some foundation of board members here in the audience, you know, it, it takes a collective effort. We have great leadership, we have great support, a great following. And look, when the annual bill started, it was, I was like, okay, we will see how this, this, this works. And I walk in the lot cook, and it was the most festive, wonderful atmosphere that I've seen. You know, it was amazing, it was fun. You know, it was a fun time. And so it was, you know, and I have that commitment. I mean, being able to raise it, and those dollars, God, that, you know, we, we don't like go, go anywhere with that. Those are for your kids. That money goes right back into the classrooms. Goes right back into the classrooms. I think this past uh, fall, we have already approved over 100 grand in different teacher grants for things to do in the classroom. So that money, that grant, we can get it right back to our kids. That's what those dollars are going to use for. Um, challenges. So we talked about all good stuff, right? So now let's talk about some of the challenges that we have here, right? So the first thing I have on the app, it says perceived life is challenging the curriculum and instruction and setting. Notice I had perceived, because guys, I'm telling you, something is out there that says that we don't have a challenging curriculum. And I, I'm, I've heard this because I've, I've actually talked to parents who have taken a child out of here after eighth grade, taking them out after eighth grade, and I asked them, why are you leaving? They said, well, they're going to get a better education at XYZ school. And my question always is, how do you measure that? Because I, I, I just I want to know. So if we need to improve, we'll, we'll improve. How are we measuring that? I get the answer. Well, it's just I'm going in whatever school. And that's fine. Everybody do what you want with your children, house. But there's a perceived lack of a challenging curriculum instruction. Okay? And so I think our job as administrators is to make sure that our parents are well on with the right information, that we do a good job of communicating that information. Because when I talk about, uh, if, we, if people say we have a lack of challenging curriculum, then how in the world do we have an average ACT of 25? How do we have over 38 kids that have over 30 uh, on the ACT? How do we have in our dual enrollment, we had 1,224 dual enrollment credit hours. I mean, how, how, how are we doing that if we, we have a lack of challenging careers? Okay? So, I don't know. One parent said, well, y'all don't wear uniforms, so we going to wear a uniform. I'm telling you, I'm not joking. I said, what? Yeah, we, we kind of different with uniforms over here, right? I'm not getting into a, a uniform discussion tonight. But we're kind of different from the uniforms over here in July, right? Because we, we want you to express themselves. We just put a U, as long as we got a U high on it, we're good. <laughs> Talk about Lululemon later. <laughs> so, lower retention rates in sixth and ninth grade. Um, again, those are the two places that we see, when we look at the numbers over, over the seven years, when we look at the numbers, this is where in sixth grade we lose kids and ninth grade we lose kids. Okay? So we have to do a, a self-reflection and figure out exactly what is going on, why is that happening there. Okay? So we, we know that this is a challenge for us. We need to figure that out. We need to figure out why. We need to get more information and say, okay, what can we do here and what can we do here to make sure that we're retaining our kids, okay? Because any, any parent that leaves, I take that personal. I take that as a personal failure, okay? Because I want to know, we didn't service that kid some kind of way. I'm not going to blame the parent. I'm going to say, all right, do this nuts. No. I'm going to say, okay, what can we do better? Because we don't want to lose anybody. We don't want to lose anybody, okay? So, Working with that. Need for more partnerships with the uh, LSU 
college, in all different departments. We want to make sure that we're partnering with them in all the different areas, in every uh, different area, whether it's interns, whether it's more student teachers, whether it's just the expertise of, of some of the different uh, professors here on this campus to work with us, partner with us, provide us with professional development. We provide them sometimes for professional development with the staff and faculty that we have. So it, it's a, a give and take, and we need to do more of that. Do more of that. Need for more diversity. You know, when we look at, uh, when we talk about need for more diversity, and it's diversity of a lot of different things. You know, most of the time people think of diversity is crazy, but we're talking about diversity of thought, we're talking about diversity of, of, of different religions, we're talking about diversity of, of many things, you know, from higher end, uh, from high, I hate using the term low SES, but you guys know what, what a low SES is. I want to I make sure that we have a, a, a true melting pot here on this campus, among our teachers, staff, among our administrative team. We want to make sure that I think when we're all together and we have different views and different upbringings and different ways of seeing the world, that we can prepare our kids for the best, uh, to be the best selves that they can possibly be. So we want that. We encourage that. Louisiana School Ranking. I, I can still remember when I, I was up during my, my interview, I said we were 18 and I was challenged on that. It's like, hey, well, you know, I said, well, we're 18. We're ranked 18. So, but let me just kind of give you what that means because it doesn't, being 18, first of all, I don't think anybody wants to be 18 in anything, right? We want to be number one. If I play checkers, I don't want to be the best checker. I, I don't care. We always want to be number one, right? 18. There's 1,271 schools in Louisiana. So we're 18. So let's put that in perspective. All right? It's pretty doggone good, right? 18 out of 1,271 schools. And that's based off of school performance score, which is a mixture of, it's a formula, it's how kids perform on tests, graduation rates, ACT, doing all. So there's a bunch of different things that make up the school performance scores. And when you put all that into a formula, you rank them, we were 18. So I put that as a challenge because we don't want to be 18. We want to be number one. Okay? We want to be number one in the state in terms of, uh, of, of school rankings. Okay? But again, I do want to say that's 18 out of 1,271. So that's pretty dog good. But we never satisfy education ranking. We never satisfy. We always want to be number one. If we're going to be a demonstrated school, we're going to be the demons. And we want to be number one. We want to be number one. Curriculum coordination. Here's what I mean by this. We do an amazing job of teaching, all our teachers do an amazing job of teaching in their classrooms. But we need to do a better job of making sure that we're communicating with one another, collaborating with one another, making sure we have those verbal and horizontal articulations from kindergarten all the way to 12. Okay? We need to make sure that we have the time, we have the space, the place in order to, for our teachers to collaborate, truly have good interaction with one another so that we can see, okay, what are you doing, how are you doing it, and how does it all flow into one seamless educational process. So when I say curriculum coordination, that's for us as a team, okay, and as a school, to make sure that we're putting people in the right rooms together so we can uh, challenge ourselves and that we have that one clear, coherent plan we're educating our children from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade. Okay. A formal mechanism to capture student and parent voice. Okay. I know we have a lot of different student organizations, um, um, but I have not seen just the, 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 the right fit for those children to give like administration. Like, like good feedback. And the same goes with with parent course. We had a meeting last night about my parent course. All right? But we don't have a, a, a big formal mechanism to capture. Okay, what do students think about us? You know, sometimes we forget to even ask, right? If they hear they're at the school, you know, especially when you start starting in the middle of high school where, where kids you know, can voice their opinions and can give you know, good feedback on certain things. We need to have a good formal mechanism. You know, they'll draw their information uh, from that. And the same goes with parents. The same goes with parents. Uh, we need to create a system, a formal system, 
the dog or get it, get it. Parents read that, get their information. So that way you can keep, you know, you know keep up with the pulse of all the water. All right, so now, listen, learn. Right? So part of what we're leaving, you know, who are we? You know, who are we? I, I thought before I got to the point where we get into the vision, okay, is who are we? And I know that question it just depends on, on who you ask. If you ask somebody outside of the, the, the U High community, they will tell you, well, U High is a private school, it's uh, an elite school, it's a magnet school, you got a test to get in, or you got to know somebody to get in. That's what people say about U High. I know you guys, I'm sure, are hearing that, right? That's what I hear, okay? That's what I hear. And so, but who are who, 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 the truth? And so in order to, for us to, to say who we are truly, I just want to take a look back at who we say we are, okay? Total effort in every endeavor. I'm going to, y'all are going to hear me say that a bunch of times because I love that first of all. Because it leaves no room for interpretation. It is what it is. It says total effort in every endeavor. So no matter what we do, we are going to give total effort. We're not going to give some effort. We're not going to give a little bit of effort. Or if you say, hey, if you're doing this, eh, no problem. No, it says total effort in every endeavor. So it means that everything that we do, we want to be the best at. We want to give 100%. We want to give a total effort in it. So I don't care. I like to say that we're a triple A district because we're going to be great in academics. We're going to be great in the arts. We're going to be great in athletics. Sometimes when I tell people that the third A and athletics, say, well, education is most important. I say, well, not according to this. According to this, it says total effort in every endeavor. So until we change that, then we're going to give total effort in every single endeavor that we do. Everyone. And so there's five key functions. You know, I know you've had a chance to kind of read that. I won't read all this to you. But we want to, our first and foremost is we want to provide an example of education for our kids. That's what we're here to do. We're going to be a model of educational environment. We're going to serve as a center for educational innovation. You know, that's what we want to do. We want to provide PD opportunities for our state's educators and offer, offer those clinical teaching experiences. That's who we are. That's our value. Those are our five key functions here at the lab school. Our values, OK? Our values, implementation of exemplary research-based teaching practices. That's what we do. If, if values to me means it's non-negotiable. It's not, we don't compromise on any of these. This is what we do. This is who we are. If it doesn't fit into this, then we're not going to do it. We're not going to compromise any of these things. Those are our values. That's who we are here at UI. And so with that said, I'll tell you in vision. 2025. Okay, we are a demonstration school. And part of, I didn't want to mess this up, so I actually wrote it because I want you to, to hear exactly what it means to be a demonstration school. We want to create partnerships with all pertinent colleges on a university campus. We want interns from every applicable college to work with us. Teaching is the highest level of learning, so we want to allow other college, other colleges to use us to bring their candidates to the highest level of understanding uh, uh, by teaching our students and working with uh, professors to provide professional development to our faculty. We will conduct symposiums and many conferences to share our best practices. If you are a demonstration school, you are a model school, those are the things that you do, okay? We, we need to help the next generation of teachers. If you read anything about the, the teachers in, in the last couple of years, you know there's a huge teacher shortage. So how do we combat that? We have to be the best ambassadors to get new uh, teachers, uh, get new candidates into the teaching profession. We have to do this or our people will die. Okay? And we cannot go without schools. We cannot go without schools. So by 2025, that's what I mean by the vision 2025. That's what that means. By 2025, this is what we are. This is who we are going to be. We're going to be a school of innovation. Okay, we, we, I am challenging our, our faculty, I'm challenging our staff, and guys, I've been met with 
It's like they're excited. I say, I want us to come up with different new and innovative ways to do things. We have the license to do this because we are a lab school, we are demonstration schools. We don't have the shackles on us like a normal school system. We can come up with new and different ways to do the things that we need to do. So forget about everything else you've heard, learned, whatever. Let's get in the room. Let's figure out something new and innovative on how we do the jobs that we do. And then when we do that, we produce that, that changes the lives of people all around the state. And if we do it well, possibly around this country. We have a, a team of people working right now on how do we uh, you know, just reinvigorate all of our STEM education from K to 12. From K to 12, that's what we want to do. Okay, and so we come up with new and innovative ways to do this work. New and innovative ways to do this work. So we are, in, by 2025, we're going to be the number one school in Louisiana and a Blue Ribbon School. Okay, if we want to do those first two things, I think it's important that we become number one, the number one rated school in Louisiana. So that now when we come and sit down in front of you and say, hey, yep, we're number one, we're the best at doing this stuff. So listen to us. Listen to us, okay? We're the best at doing this. And if once we we are that number one school, that Blue Ribbon School, it gives you just more and more credibility to do the work that we need to do. We create and utilize cutting edge curriculum and instruction, okay? We're going to be creating curriculum. You know, there's a lot of school systems that, you know, they, they get curriculum, the teachers get handed curriculum. We want to be creating. We have the expertise here to create our own. We have the expertise here to create our own curriculum to teach the standards in every, every subject. We just have to give our teachers, again, the time, the space, the agency. You know, meaning that they can do it. You have the authority to do this. Do it. We want you to. What do you need? What resources do you need? Okay? And I'm telling you, when I'm having these conversations with our teachers, they are like, it's like Wonder Woman, Superman, and just coming out. Okay? Because they're excited about that. Let's do, this. Like, okay, let's do it. We have the finances and resources to achieve at the highest levels. Okay? We have to be able to have the money and the funds in order to recruit and retain the best uh, teachers here on the staff. Okay? People, you know, sometimes have to retire, people move away. We need to have the ability to bring them back in. We need to have to give them incentives to want to stay here at the lab school. Okay? I think the I didn't show the last one. We had state raise of eight hundred dollars this past year. So eight hundred dollars for a year, divided that by twelve or nine, if you're nine one teacher, I guess it might be a large Starbucks, maybe, you know, a month. So but we need to be able to have the funding in order to you know, retain and, and, and reward our teachers for doing an amazing job. And I told you their credentials, I told you the results. And we need to make sure that we're honoring, honoring them as professionals. Um, we are inclusive and diverse. We want to make sure that we are better when we are inclusive. We are better when we are diverse. We are better when we have multiple people coming from different lenses in order to make the school the best place it can be. We are STEAM focused. Again, science, technology, engineering, arts, math. We, we, all, we want to be on the precipice of being great. We, we want to come in and say, man, look at what they've done over the last couple of years here at the lab school. That's what we want. And lastly, we are UI. We're going to always be together. You're going to always have a great community. You're going to always have a great tailgate. You're going to always have fun together. Okay? And so that's our vision. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to you guys to see if there's any specific questions uh, that you may have. <clears throat>